Hi everybody! All right, so the next block that we are going to work on basting will be block 9-2. This is a half block, so it should be fairly straightforward to do. So the pieces we need are B, J, and A. So I did pull those out. This is the Queen of Diamonds block of the month. And they have all these pieces pre-sorted for you, which makes it really easy. But uh, we just have to pull out the pieces that we need. So we're gonna start with block B. And it looks like I need two of those. So we'll pull out two. All right, so two of those, so that's easy. And these are going to go on our Moonbeam Tent Stripe. And I think I have, I do. So I have a piece of this that I've already used. Actually, I think I have three pieces. So I have two pieces from two other. I have a piece from this block, a piece from another block, and then a piece from a third block. And I've only had to use the piece from the third block so far, or from the first block, so we'll keep cutting into that. So that leaves me with two pieces that are completely uncut, which is nice. So, <clears throat> how these tent stripes are going to go. So it looks like, basically, I'm going to eyeball the brown stripe centered on this smaller top. So the middle of each of these brown stripes is going to get centered on the small top of the letter B. So let's go ahead and open this up and I can probably, I try to get rid of these creases a little bit just in case they interfere. It's not really worth ironing it over, but just so there's a little less crease there. So we are going to, I use my light board to do all of my items. I don't use the acrylic templates as I don't find that they're as reusable as a light board. There are a few things that are a little bit more of a challenge without the templates, but you got to remember in the 1800s, they did a lot of English paper piecing early 1900s and they never used acrylic templates. So obviously it is very doable without it. Just going to make adjustments here and there. So what we are looking for with this, and I'll zoom in a little bit for you so you can see it a little better, <clears throat> is basically I want my two brown stripes centered as best I can. Oh. Huh. <clears throat> okay, so those aren't actually going to be able to be centered. So this has been kind of a problem with these this pattern so this pattern was done digitally before any of the fabrics were even printed so some of the sizing has been off which isn't the end of the world you just got to make adjustments so basically these stripes should just be evenly centered but you can see the way they have it is one stripe down the middle and then the browns are centered on that top and if you see here that you're going to get all three fully in. So if it was centered, it'd be like this, but that puts me centered on the green here. That's not even. So we're just going to go ahead and <clears throat> center this. I'll do it so I have my seam allowance here and I should be able to put the other one upside down here. <clears throat> so you always just make little adjustments. It's not a big deal. It's going to have the same similar look and probably if you looked at the quilt that they actually made with real fabrics, it would be exactly the same way. We can double check that in a second, but so we'll put this down here and then just do the same thing so that they're both the same. That's the biggest thing. You want these to be consistent. So we'll go ahead and put this upside down though, just, but again, I want it nice and evenly centered. And that will give me my stripes there. So let's go ahead and look at that. What quilt is this? Oh, did you? Nope, that's not the real quilt. Where's the real quilt? Real quilt is on the back. And I don't know if you can really see it. Maybe if I put it on the camera. So it's this one. And it does look like it goes into the green. It's hard to tell because it does get cut off. But either way, it is what it is. That's what the way the stripes go. So we will go ahead and cut those out. I just use scissors to cut all my thing, all of my patterns. I don't use a rotary cutter. 
just makes it more portable to use the scissors. I do a 3 8 inch seam allowance around the whole side. It doesn't have to be super precise because remember they're getting folded over. The paper is your precision, not your cutting around the edges. You just want to leave enough room so it doesn't become unraveled uh, once you, the quilt is done. So I will go ahead, cut that out, and then we'll talk about how my ears should go once I have it all cut out. So when you're looking at ear theory, you just want to make sure that your ears do not interfere with each other. So we're going to have ears on these two diamonds. We're going to have ears on this triangle. So what I think I'm going to do is, so these two ends won't, won't have ears. These are the two ends that will have ears. And the ears will either go sideways or they can go out into the sashing. So to make my life easier and not have to worry about these ears at all, I am going to do these such that the ears will go into the sashing. So what that means is I want to glue down the long edge first, and then when I glue down these sides, that will put the ears into the sashing. So that's how we're going to go ahead and do that. So we'll fold up this last piece, put it with our other ones, and we still have quite a bit left. We did three blocks with this, guys. They have sent so much fabric with this. It's amazing. I love it. Um, I know it was a little pricier kit. Some people complained about, you know, so much fabric being sent. They could have sent less and maybe done a less pricier kit. But honestly, I'm super glad they sent so much fabric because I feel like I can get probably three or four projects done out of this. And I'm not good at combining fabric. So now all of them are coordinated and everything. I think that's a lot of fun. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get these basted. I will do that in fast time for you and move on to the next piece. So these are all set. We have the tails pointing out. Those will end up in the sashing, so I don't have to worry about those interfering with anything else. So the next letter that we're going to do is a J, and that's going to be on our fairy dust. So it looks like I need three of piece J. So one, two, it's like dealing cards. One, two, three. So these are going to be, so I have one that is going to be a full piece and then two that will end up being half pieces. So when I'm placing them on the fairy dust, I do like the little birdies. So I do try to fussy cut a little bit so that I get some birds and stuff in there, but I'm not going to go crazy with that. It's not a big deal either way. So let's go ahead. We just have one piece of this. This hasn't been used before. So we'll turn on our light box and go ahead and get these three placed. So I think I like this bluebird. And since he's close to the edge, what I will do is center him on the edge. And then this one will end up being... So wait, hold on. No, because that'll get cut off, right? Because this will be... Can I turn it? Then he'll be upside down. Okay, so that bird's not gonna work because he'll end up upside down anyways. How does that work? No, that'll be fine. See, this is the whole process. My brain is working. All right, I gotta do it visually. So I gotta turn the fabric around. Oops. Okay, yeah, so if I do this, he'll be right side up. Okay. So we'll do it like this. So we'll get him in there. Let's go ahead and where's my glue stick? So he's going to be one of our edges because he will get 
the block will get trimmed down the middle and then he'll be on a corner. So that one's easy. Then I have this purple, another blue. So let's do this purple guy kind of, we'll do that on our, as our big diamond. So that'll be our full diamond. So it doesn't, I can flip the diamond around so there's no real orientation there, but I don't want to center him. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna off center it a little bit. So that'll be our full diamond. And then for the other diamond, the other half diamond, you know, I think maybe I don't want to do another bird because I don't want it to be all about the birds either. So I think I'll do it. I'm gonna go down a little bit. We'll do it like this. Cause then it'll be So these stars will show up in there. Okay, so that's easy. So we will go ahead and cut those out. And then my tail theory on these is to just have the tails go in the same direction. And the, the half diamonds will end up getting trimmed anyway. So it really doesn't matter which way the tails go on that. So I think I'm just going to have all of the tails point towards the sashing on these. So I just got to figure that out for one second how that's going to work. But I will go ahead, cut them out, and then base them and do that in fast motion for you. Okay, so this is the problem of doing these types of fussy cuttings on the back. So I had planned on this bird being in the middle, which would mean he would be like this, and then this one would be one of our sides. And so this is kind of how they're laid out in the quilt is this way. So you can see you have your two cutoffs and then one main one. And so that would be fine, except my bluebird would be cut off, which I thought he would be fine. And if I turn him around, he's clearly flying upside down, which I do not want. But thankfully, I did do this purple bird more fudged to the right. So he might get cut off like a smidgen. It might just be the top of his body, which might be a little weird. Actually, I could probably move my template over a little bit. Maybe I'll do that too. But... I think I'll switch that. So the blue bird is there. This is was not intended to have a bird anyways. And I think maybe I will try and move this bird over a little bit more. Should I add that? So that even if I have a little bit smaller seam allowance, he's at least a little bit more than half so he doesn't get cut off too much. So we'll do that. So this is why you double check everything and just make sure that it's all gonna work. So I'm glad I checked that because they would have been placed in the wrong place. And then the big thing will be remembering when I'm sewing, which one goes where. <laughs> so usually I do take a picture after I baste it so that I remember what's gonna go where, but that's how they're gonna go. So as far as basting, I usually make my tails go the same way. So for this one, I'm gonna make my tails go this way because that'll go into the sashing. And then for these, I'm gonna make my tails go this way because that's gonna go into the half of the block that's gonna be cut off anyway. So that will make sure that those tails don't interfere with anything and make it nice and easy. So I will go ahead and baste those. So this part of the video was supposed to be basting, but of course, I forgot to hit record so just pretend like I'm basting right now. So these three are all set so my tails again going into the sashing these will go into the half that I cut off so those are all set so we can set those one aside. So the next 
fairy dust I need to do is letter A. So those are the little triangles. And it looks like I need two of those. So one and two. Dealing my cards. One and two. All right. So that is also going to be this fairy dust. And those pieces are going to be also cut off on the edge and they are gonna be at the top and bottom for those. So I think I wanna do one bird maybe at the bottom. So I have to figure out making sure he doesn't get cut off. Ooh, I could do it like this, oops. What if I did both these birds in there and then one of them won't get cut off? <laughs> One's upside down. Okay, so, I want at the bottom, the bird's gonna have to be at the top and it's gonna have to be on the opposite side, right? Because when I flip this over, okay. So I think if I do this bird like that, he will show up in my cut. So let's go ahead and do this bluebird just like this. That should be perfect. Make sure he's more than halfway so that he doesn't get, his nose doesn't get cut off. Perfect. And I didn't really make efficient use of this fabric, but maybe I could do this corner and that'll work. So at least that won't get wasted. So we'll do this. So no bird on this one. I don't want the birds everywhere. I do like the birds, but I don't want that to be the focus. So we'll do that one there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and trim those out. And again, not a lot of tail theory on triangles. The, tri the tails just kind of go the way they're gonna go. Uh, my tip for triangles is always just to go in a the same direction around. So if you start on one edge and go counterclockwise, Make sure you start on the same edge and go counterclockwise on the other one. If you like to go clockwise, just make sure you do it the same on all of them. And that will make sure that you have enough choices with your tails to be able to nest everything. So we'll go ahead and cut these out and baste them. And we'll do the fast motion for you guys for that. And then be back for the last few pieces. So these last two are done. So this is going to be the bottom triangle. This will be the top triangle. So that'll be easy peasy. So the last fabric we wanna work with is this mineral in green. So the first letter we're gonna work with is J and I need two of those. So go ahead and I think that was two. Yep, two, perfect. And actually, this is a non-directional fabric, so I can do the J and the A together. And I may even actually be able to do this on a fold, depending on what I have for fabric here. So I have this piece that came with this month that I don't need to use. I have a piece that was cut up for a previous month that I will use. So it looks like I kept this. This is really not useful. I'm gonna cut that off. So I keep bigger, bigger, small pieces for this. I'm doing a quarter inch hexi quilt. So I will keep that for that, but that really wasn't a usable. There's no blocks in this quilt that are that size. So I'm just gonna trim that off. So what we are going to do is we are going to fold this fabric and I'm gonna try and get rid of this crease. You just do that by kind of finger pressing this the other way. The creases, like I said in other videos, this does not matter too much. You can leave it. It will come out eventually as you're sewing, just as the fabric eases. 
I just find it easier to try and get rid of it. I don't find it that so much of a nuisance that I want to pop out the iron to take care of it. So, but I just do try to get rid of it a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold it over. So each of these have two. So what I want is to be able to just place them both down and then cut it out double and we'll glue the paper on to the other side. So this is super easy. There's no direction to this, so you don't have to even turn on the light box. All we do is glue it down, cut it out, glue the next one down, cut it out, baste it. It's probably the easiest of all of the fabrics in this month. So that one will get glued down. We'll glue this one down. Make sure we leave enough for seam allowance. I don't want to go too far out though because I want to preserve my fabric. I might be able to save that one's a little bit bigger than the other side that I cut off so I might be able to do something with that. So all I'm going to do is cut these two out, glue these two papers onto the opposite side, and then baste it. So I'll do that in fast motion for you guys to see. So these were the last of our pieces to put together. So let's go ahead and test fit the block just to make sure that everything works. So what do we have? So this, this is our center triangle. Actually, no. I'll turn my, I know that's not quite gonna fit on the screen. But. Center triangle. Then we had two of these. Go like that. Then these. This is perfect right now. Okay. Then this bird up here. Then this bird. Okay, that's good. Then we had, I guess so you're not gonna get the whole thing in here, but we had that, and that, and then the birds down below, which aren't even gonna really sit there. Okay, so that should work. So we have the birds down below. All right, so it looks like everything fits well. All of our tails fit in, so that's really good. So this block should be all set, ready to base. I'll make a video, or not base, uh, sew together. So I'll make a video for that for you guys. So if you have any questions about this block or how it goes together, please ask in the comments. If there's anything else that you would like to see, let me know. Make sure you are following my channel on YouTube as I do post my videos sporadically. So YouTube will an alert you when I post a new one. I have one more block to put together in the set, which will be block 9-3. So be on the lookout for that video as well. And if you have any questions, make sure you ask in the comments. And I hope you like these videos, everyone. Thanks so much. We'll see you later.